Hi. Um, all of your faces look very familiar, so there might be some stuff I'm just going to skip over, considering you guys have probably had enough of the introduction to ODT. Even though I do have slides, you could feel free to look at. Um, today my talk will focus on the balance framework. Um, will be the overview we kind of will skip through. We'll talk about why we actually developed balance framework, and then what struggles we went through, how we handled them, and then what it actually is and how it's been implemented. Just an overview of the architecture, and then I'll be giving a demonstration of how to install it and configure it for yourself. You guys are more than welcome to follow along. I'll be giving instructions. Um, so it originally started at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory with the funding of the, from the Office of Space Science in 1998. Um, the software that we created was to it was for, for us to reduce the redundancy of like developing the same thing over and over for most of the missions. So we just made a general one with, that has high, highly configurable components that are loosely connected that you could go through and just choose what fits into your project most easily and how it works best. Um, here's ODT at Apache. I think everyone's already gone over this, so I'm just going to skip through it. Um, what it is, it's a software with components that facilitate the rapid construction of robust software systems. Um, it's, it's, a, it's for large scale data management, so it's the loose, as I said, the loosely components that we, the loosely connected components that we have just gives you a lot of flexibility. I'll be focusing on two of the components that we have, that we have created modules for actually in the balance framework, which is the file manager that does the data management, so it tracks all your data, the metadata, and the files you have. And then the workflow manager, which does all the pipelining, and I think Chris gave a really good detailed information about that. Um, so what we have for balance is an interface that you don't have to use command lines to get in touch with the an interface with the backend components. So it's, it's also very reusable that you could seamlessly get, it's like it mitigates these issues of seamlessly getting it part of your website and configures to what you need very easily. So we thought of creating this framework which we called Balance. It supports reuse, provides a common modular code base, and it's very configurable. So you could go into the backend and just configure it to set it to a certain port and you could do the same thing. It's very, it kind of mirrors what the back end does for the front end. So what is balance? It provides a common code, uh, code base to quickly implement your own PHP applications if need be. It's a great interface to the ODT core services. Um, we've, we, we were in a, in, at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we were actually dealing with a lot of missions that were fast-paced. And this fast-paced environment where you have to set up a bunch of websites for different projects, instead of like having to do the same thing over and over again, just to reduce that constant repetition of tasks, we made a file manager, uh, we made a, sorry about that, a framework for us to just easily implement and just configure to your own needs. And it's really easy to install and maintain. We use Pear to do that. Um, oh, and it creates a standard environment. That's what our main goal was to easily connect. And so it, it all counts on the. It all counts on that environment that we set up. So it just makes it easy for you to get things started and move on through move through it so you could have implementations for authentication providers or authorization providers, some data management providers. Um, next, I'll give you a brief overview of what the application skeleton is. So this is kind of what we standardize also for, it's just very organized and it's the same format for even the modules that we have that some people might call extensions. So it's, it encourages the rapid development also for us when we have a standard clean design. 
we have the modules. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but it has the same exact format as the application skeleton, so it has the same classes, directory, modules, script, static. So it just makes it easy to go back and find what you need for a specific module or even your application in general. We have um, a static directory where all your resources would go, such as images, jQuery libraries, or even something like Twitter bootstrap library that you could add on. Um, we have views um, where you could, where you obviously put most of your views in, so that's the PHP code. Um, so we have a common directory too, which I should mention that it's for all your code, such as headers and footers that you would follow along with. Um, we have a config file where all your configurations would go. I think I briefly mentioned this. Your modules directory has this too. So to configure each module, you have your own configuration file. And this kind of organizes it, because in the beginning, we started out with having just one config file for an application. and it sort of got messy, so we decided to have each module have its own config.ani file. Just makes it more readable. And the main index.php file is actually what kicks off the balance bootstrap, so it starts the pair package that you install, it starts that off. So the balance library consists of the balance core, and it has interfaces. To get into the balance core, there's four main applications. We have an application class, which is the main class. And this has utility methods and functions that provide all the functionality across the website. Um, we have the request class. It's the method for interpreting and processing a request that you send in. So it takes the URI and takes it into segments and deciphers what you're looking for and directs you to exactly that directory and displays it. Our response class is what does dynamic constructing of the website. So if within your code somewhere you dynamically realize that you need to add a certain JavaScript or a certain CSS file, that's where you would do that and it gets processed in the response class. Um, and the data class, it's, it's not used directly, but it's very usable if you need it in your own specific example. It's, it provides a standard response object for you to send from page to page. Um, we have interfaces, an authentication provider, authorization provider, data provider, and a widget provider. Um, an example of the authentication provider is our LDAP authentication interface, so that easily you could just put in your own configuration, so what host and port your LDAP is located, and plug it into your website, and one of the modules we have that I'll discuss further uses that. Um, the reason why we separated authentication and authorization was due to allowing the user to log in is separate from allowing the user to view certain metadata fields, for example, in the file manager. So it, we've constricted it to certain groups that could view it, so we've given the user the option to do that. Um, the, the data and widget provider, it's, the data provider is, so if you have a, for example, a, something that you're connecting to, it standardizes the way you would connect to certain things and retrieve. So if you have an inter, a, a website that displays certain things from you, let's say your MongoDB, you could easily plug in using this interfaces that we have set up, let's say a MySQL database, and just easily switch from one to the other, and it just gives you that flexibility. Widgets are something that you could actually put into any of your page if you're actually using, let's say, a navigation bar. That's gonna be implemented in multiple pages, so it, it's easy to just put in all your pages, so it, that's like where we got the widget from. I'll be starting on the installation and demonstration, uh, the installation demonstration, and I'm gonna show you how easy and quickly you could do it. You're more than welcome to follow on your own. Um, so we for, uh, I've already installed the pair package, so I just wanna give a brief overview about it. We have, um, there's an issue with the channel, but there's a work around it, and it's only four lines of code. As you could see, you just check it out, get into the directory, pair package it, and do a sudo install and you could get the environment going. Okay. 
Where's my cursor? I should probably... Does that look okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Might need to increase the size a little bit. Up to you. Okay. Does that work for you guys? It looks okay. All right. Um, so as I showed earlier, this is the skeleton that we have for the balance framework so we have our classes so to give you a brief overview of what we have in here so in here we would have like a footer and header like I said common things that would go throughout the website errors pages so in the config.ni when you first check out the code you would go to find site root and it gives you a lot of detail in the config configuration file. It already gives you details of how to install most of these things, but just to give you a slight demo, what I called my folder was Apache Con. So in the config.ini, go change that. If you want to point to different directory, for example, for your views, you're more than welcome to, and this is where you would configure that. Um, next is your header file path. You have the uh, the benefit of naming anything you'd like to these files also. So if you want to call header something else, you have that opportunity to do that here. And then we go to the .htaccess file, which most of you should know if you guys are at Apache, right? The HTTP. <laughs> so you go to your rewrite base and then do the same thing here just to let your let you know where you're going to your website. So this is what it looks like once you set that up. And I want to show you how easy it is to add your own skin. I actually downloaded something earlier online and just put it in my statics directory and called it a travel skin because it's for a travel blog. And what it includes is images, a style.css file. So once I take the header for that and put it in my main, or actually I could use the config file and just point to that. My config. Nope. Very nasty. I like that. Yeah. So you you could easily add your own skin. It's very simple to do. So, I mean, that's what the balance framework is based around to make it really e easy and fast to develop. I actually added my own to. Actually, here I'll show you what the actual skin looks like. So this is their travel blog that I just Jack. connected to, <laughs> and then. Um, so that's the showing you how easy it is to, to, to install yourself. It's pretty easy. And then let's go back to slides. OK. Um, I'll be talking about our balance extensions, which we call modules here. As you saw in the directory, that's what we named it. Talk about the modules we have available. and where it's actually used, different projects that use it, and give you a demonstration of how to install your own modules. So this is a quote I found on the website, actually. So that's the motto we follow also. It's, you know, if we had components that were tightly integrated, it was going to be so hard to assemble where if we changed one thing, it was just going to be a ripple of changes throughout the code. So we tried to go as far away as possible, so have it self-contained and very loosely connected. We just wanted something like to easily just drop in and use, just like the skin, for example, that I showed. Um, we have the CAS browser, which connects to the, file, the ODT file manager. It, it gives you um, a list of all the 
product types we have and you could drill in further, look at all the products that each product type has and drill in even further and look at the metadata and be able to download your own products. The monitor module is not at Apache yet, but it's something we've worked on for some of the NASA projects we have, such as MPP Sounder, Pete. Mm, so I'm gonna give you like an example of that also to just to show you like how balance could be used also. We have a profile manager that's the one that connects to the LDAP and lets people to log in for sensitive information. We have news feeds that it's really easy to add, you know, what's going on, date, and just sort it by that and give updates to people. And it's RSS, it uses RSS. We have Puny Content Manager, very easy to use, just log in, click, and change. And it it's actually connected to a Markdown backend. I don't know if any of you know that, uh, what that is, but it's very easy to use. The Content Manager actually has a description of how to use it, so it's very useful. And then we have a wizard, which we've used on one of our projects, um, mainly um, even though we're like still working on the implementation of that. What it does, it takes content that you've stored in to one page and kind of moves it further along the pages that you would go through and s stores that in the end and you could you know do whatever you like with it. It just takes all the, comp uh, all the options you might have selected in previous pages and collects it into one whole thing. Here are some of the projects we have that we've used it for. So it works for a diverse set of science data systems such as planetary science, um, earth science, radio astronomy. Some of these projects might actually sound familiar because people talked about it such as CO2, SKA, EDRN. Um, I'll move on to the demonstration of our modules. Okay. So the modules are really in easy to install also. It's, you could find them at Apache ODT um, directory. It's under the balance folder and you could find modules in there. I've already checked them out. Um, didn't want to depend too much on the internet here. Um, I've actually used the monitor module which is in the JPL repository now but we're hopefully one day we'll move that over once it's you know passed through Chris Matman. Uh, Give the okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, you can't do it now. That's the last part of your talk. You're going to SVN commit it right now and create your right? Sounds good. <laughs> so I've checked it out, and here's the configuration file. I already have my Tomcat server up for connecting to the file manager in the back end. And over here, so I, I have it at localhost 990, I mean 9900. This is the access authorization and authentication bit that once you have secure data that you won't, don't want everyone to use, that's when you would connect to the profile manager and make a little, a few changes here and give users the correct, um, the correct access to what they need to get to. Over here you have, you have the options to set which uh, metadata fields will appear in certain sections of of your CAS browser, which will be right here. So I added a link to it right here. And so this is what you would see all the product types, the description and ID, and that was set right here. So it's easy to change, so if I wanted to commit to taking the description out, it should take it out and just show you the name and ID. Um, the monitor module, works the same way. So the Tomcat servers that I have up points to a PCS health um, that Chris Matman and some of the other guys at JPL 
put together before I think I started working there, right? Yeah, and then um, we have one that actually connects to the Wenjin workflow. That's why we still haven't moved that there. Do you have a Wenjin void for this? Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> so here's an example of what it looks like. <laughs> Here it is. So it tells you that the file manager is running at localhost 9900, 9, and then uh, your workflow manager is running. And then crawlers, I didn't set up any crawlers, not that one would be running right now. Um, and then it tells you all the last 20 files that would be ingested, that was ingested in your file manager with the receive time. So the workflow monitor here gives you an outline of all the different states that your workflows would be in. And then if you click on this, oh, what happened? Uh-oh. Did my workflow stop running? Are you missing a slash? A slash? No. Oh. Well, it pretty much looks like the, what the CADS browser did, and it tells you, so if you have sub-processes before your processes, you could actually drill down into it and view those. I'm sorry, it didn't come up, but um, yeah, I don't have any other examples. I think some of the NASA projects I work with are s kind of secure, so I don't know if I should show them right now. <laughs> um, but it's really simple to use, and that's kind of what I wanted to come out here and tell you guys. It's as you can see, it's easy to install your own skin and just seamlessly integrates with a website you want to do. And you could add your own modules, commit that back to Apache ODT maybe one day. So I have time for questions. PHP ignorant, so excuse me. This, um, how does this relate to other PHP frameworks? Does it build on it, or is it something uh, uh, no framework for uh, no for web application? Does it?